Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at the Artisan Cutlery Arnis. This is a Dylan Mallory collaboration. Love a lot of his stuff. I love his design aesthetics and this one really, really hit home for me. I absolutely love the aesthetics of this one. Not to mention you have this nice drop point blade that's going to be very versatile because it's a very low tip. I can easily use that tip to do drag cuts or find precise cuts. And being that it has a very gradual belly to that tip, in-hand cuts should be a breeze and you have enough belly to do cuts on a flat cutting surface rather easily also. But as far as what it's going to excel at, of course the drag cuts is really, really going to excel. That's going to be like a little scalpel up there in the front. Whenever you're cutting on a flat cutting surface this isn't gonna be as easy as say a, a swoopy clip point or even a drop point that has a high tip on it with that belly going up like that just makes that a little bit easier however this one still should perform really really well and I call this a large EDC knife coming in at 8.03 inches long with a three and a half inch blade of CPM S90V steel. I've tested a lot of Artisan CPM S90V and it's been good to me. It, I, I love S90V. It takes a very aggressive toothy edge and you can get it very sticky sharp. Holds that edge for a good amount of time. They went with a satin finish on here. I don't love the satin finish. It's very fingerprinty <laughs> and it just looks a little dirty after a little while. I would have much preferred a raw stone wash finish on this one, but as it sits, I'm okay with it. You do have a blade hole. We'll talk about that later. You do have some jimping up top. I call it moderate traction jimping. It does its job. They could have probably extended it a little bit further, but I'm okay with it the way it is. That point is thin enough to make nice slicey cuts with it. And if you had to pierce into something, you could. You do have a sharpening tool. However, they definitely could have given us more of a sharpening tool because that plunge line goes all the way to the end of that. So after I finished the testing, I did sharpen this one up and you can see it's starting to flare in the back. So I would love to see that opened up a little bit. We have a pretty high flat grind. You have a small portion of flat right there that comes down to around 18 thousandths behind the edge. So it should be fairly slicey. We're going to find out. This knife came wicked, wicked sharp. And I, I'd say I think this is probably my favorite blade shape. You have just that right amount of belly to do just about any type of cutting and this one is a nice and slicey blade it feels like it has good geometry and their s90v holds up well um, i love how toothy the s90v gets uh, every time i sharpen their stuff i usually put 600 grit edge and then drop it with 10 micron excellent now we're gonna test the air goes in this piece of pine and We'll say for the most part, it's comfortable. Um, it is a thinner handle, so you are going to be squeezing a little bit tighter, which is going to in turn fatigue your wrist, forearms, and stuff like that. But once I really started bearing down, I could kind of feel the little hump in the scale. I hate whenever they put those extra little humps. Um, and my fingers just land right on top of it. It wasn't terrible or anything. I could definitely feel it. Maybe in the long run, I'd feel it. But as you can see, you can still get the tip down on the things. That's why I like this blade shape so much. And you still have enough belly to make all these cuts rather easily without lifting it up on a block. So it's just a overall jack of all trades type of it, uh, blade grind right there. Definitely love it. And I'm loving the performance. It is blasting through this material. And I got to say, I I'm going to sharpen this up once I get done. Because if you like the performance as it is out of box man just wait till you put your first second third edge on it it's going to get better and better each time but now we get to the half inch sizzle rope as you can see it's still performing good it has a, enough aggression to the edge to where it's mainly push cutting this half inch sizzle rope and it's doing a really really good job i'm, I'm not having to put a whole lot of pressure into it to uh make it to, to slice into it and like I said earlier, I have enough belly to do these rather easily. Pinch grip was nice and comfortable. I wasn't afraid that I was going to disengage that button lock the way I'm holding it. And yeah, we get through, I think, yeah, we get through 130 cuts before I run out of the piece I cut. And just so you know, I'm not trying for edge retention. I'm just making sure nothing crazy happens with the apex, like any tear out or anything or crazy dolling right away 
and I'm also seeing how well it slices. So it's getting an A plus for both of those, slicing very, very well, and it, it's not losing its edge right away. S90V can hold an edge for a good amount of time. I think they rock well these under like, I think 59 to 61 maybe. I'd say it's probably in that 60-ish range, but definitely acceptable, especially at the $200 price point that these go for. I think that's an outstanding deal. And overall, this just really topped it off for this knife for me. Absolutely love this knife. All right, let's test the edge out after all the cutting. Still feels great. Yeah. Nice. Now, when it comes to the action and deployment of this knife, this is where it truly, truly excels. You have that blade hole, and you have a very well-tuned, if you want to call it detent, from that button lock. This thing rockets out, and it's very nice and crisp. It's a very satisfying break to that button. Very, very nice riding on ceramic ball bearings. And as soon as you release that plunger, this thing is a drop shut knife. Very smooth. And being that you don't have to keep your fingers in the blade path, that is a lot safer when you close that blade so you don't have to worry about it dropping on your fingers or anything. You can easily slow roll it. If you want to do the spidey drop, you can do that also. And if you want, you can thumb flick it pretty easy as well. Now I did do some spine whack, I'm gonna do some light ones here. <laughs> Solid as a rock, and it did the same whenever I spine whacked it earlier. Close it up, let's take a look at these handles. You have titanium scales, you have this little milled divot that goes in here, just for some added uh, aesthetics there. I think it looks nice. Your hardware, you have a Torx T8 for the pivot and the body screws, excellent job. The only T6 you have are the ones for this pocket clip. It is a reversible tip up mill titanium pocket clip. And my biggest gripe probably with this knife besides the sharpening choil is the pocket clip. It's a shorter pocket clip and it sits into that groove right there. It's, it doesn't have a whole lot of spring to it because of how short it is. They would have had to put a relief cut about right there to make it a little bit more springy. It does go in there. And it's not terrible. Mine's gotten a little bit better, but I wish it would have been a little bit easier. Uh, you have that much sticking out, so you do have something to grab a hold to when pulling it out. And you do have enough ramp underneath there to fit in most jeans, at least all my jeans, it fits nicely. And being that you don't have a flipper tab, whenever it's in the pocket, it is hugging this side of the pocket. So if you want to put a phone or something in there, you can without it getting roughed up by a flipper tab. You do have flow through construction, two hourglass standoffs in the back. And no internal milling, which I was kind of surprised by because it doesn't feel all that heavy. But you do have this milling right here. Bringing the weight to 104.9 grams or 3.7 ounces, which in my opinion is outstanding. As far as the button lock, as you can see, there is a recessed spot right there. So you don't accidentally disengage it. You do have to press it past that to release that button. I don't have any, any stick that bothers me on here. You do have a, a little bit of stick, but... I prefer that. That way I know this is nice and tightly locked up. And as you can see here, it's a little shorter than the Ontario Rat 1 and it's bigger than the Rat 2. And just a hair shorter than the Spyderco PM2 and a good bit bigger than Spyderco Power 3. And it's just a hair shorter than the Cold Steel American Lawman and the Concept Nestreet. Now for my nitpicks and complaints, definitely think they could have given us enough sharpening toil to where you wouldn't have flare back here when you sharpen it. And also, I would have liked to see this pocket clip either come out a little bit further or maybe have a relief cut underneath there just to make it have a little bit better flex. However, like I said earlier, mine has broken in a little bit and it's not as bad as it was when I first got it. But other than that, I absolutely love this knife. The action on this knife is just remarkable. Not to mention, I love that blade shape. It's so versatile. Love S90V steel. It's comfortable in hand. And yeah, overall, I think it's a great night. These come in at $200, and I think that's a great deal for everything you're getting here. So if this one interests you, I will have it linked down below. It is an affiliate link, so if you want to help support what I do here on this channel, that is pretty much the only way to do so. If not, no big deal at all. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down below, and I'll do my best to get back with you. And I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace! Ah!